We want to let you know here at First Apostolic Church that we have three corporate prayer meetings a week at 9.15 on Sunday morning, at 5.30 on Sunday nights, and at 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights. Please join us for a time of prayer. I know that you have personal prayer time, but there's nothing like coming together and assembling together with a church body and calling on the name of Jesus.
everyone, we're excited that you joined us for service and we want to extend an invitation to you to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. At any point in the service that you feel the, the desire or the tugging on your heart to make that decision, please find a host or a hostess near you and they will direct you to one of the pastoral team that you can make that decision. We've got a change of clothes. We've got everything you need to baptize you today. If you're ready, we're ready. Praise the Lord, church. Why don't we go ahead and stand? How many's come to praise the Lord tonight? Do you believe that our God is great and there is nothing he can't do tonight? Oh, if you believe it, why don't you lift your hands to heaven and let's start this service off with just worshiping his name, praising his name. Why don't you lift up your voice? Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We've come to bless your name, bless your name. There's nothing you can't do, Jesus. Help us sing it tonight in just one word. You call the storm that surrounds me. In just one word, the darkness has to retreat. In just one touch, I feel the
nothing you can't do. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. So let faith arise and let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Help us sing. I will believe for greater things. There's no power.
you lift your hands and just tell them, Lord, I love you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. My King, my King. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, could we just lift our hands and lift our voices? Come on, could we lift our hands and lift our voices right now? We've worshipped him through the music. With the music, can we lift our hands and lift our voices right now? Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, I lift my hands and I lift my voice. Jesus, you're worthy. Jesus, you're worthy. God, you're worthy. Jesus, you're worthy of our praise tonight. I've come to sing a love song to my King. Oh, when I rise and when I fall, on the mountain I've come to sing a love song. Oh, a love song to my King. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Our ushers will make their way to the front at this time. Praise the Lord, church. So good to be back in the house of the Lord tonight. And uh, so good to get the reports uh, Sunday, of course, Sunday morning, I was here and uh, Brother Nolan Carpenter brought the word on dominion. How many have been taking dominion? How many have been taking dominion? Amen. Walking a little different, taking, taking dominion. And uh, then Sunday night, uh, Brother Hammond uh, brought a word and what a life-changing word about our children. Did you appreciate that good word on Sunday night? Let me, let me tell you what you did Sunday. Let me tell you what you did Sunday. See, the Bible tells us that no man lives to himself and no man dies to himself. That we are examples one to another. We're examples one to another. And... For the last two years, I have been privileged, I have been privileged to uh, preach the final night of the Apostolic Restoration Church in uh, Monroe, West Monroe, Louisiana, pastored by Brother Nathan Thornton. I have been privileged to close that, that, that missions conference out. And of course, on that night, they... Um, it's a special night that they pledge to missions. And uh, last year that I was there, um, 
I, I believe a, a couple of hundred thousand dollars was raised. They're starting, they're starting a school. And while I was there, I left, actually I left just right as brother Nolan Carpenter called everybody up to the altar. And there's a Delta flight that leaves here. And, and um, I flew and I got there just in time, just in time for their church service. But something was said to Brother Thornton about me being the general superintendent. And evidently, he wanted to correct some things of why he had me there in West Monroe. He said, I don't have you. I don't have Brother Carpenter here because he's a superintendent. I have him here because I want the spirit of FAC Maryville in West Monroe. So I, I want the spirit, I, I want the spirit. He represents the spirit at FAC Maryville. So let me tell you what you did Sunday. Sunday night at the end of the service when I preach, I just preach about how good God's been to us here and I tell about what God's done for us. At the end of the service, uh, he told me that uh, he sent me a little note Monday, their secretary put everything together. There was over a quarter of a million dollars over a quarter of a million dollars in cash and check offerings that came in that night. And then he said, on top of the quarter of a million dollars of cash checks and cash that came in, he said there's over a hundred thousand dollars that have been pledged as 300, I think 347 something thousand dollars came in. That's what you all did Sunday. That's what you all did Sunday. What you have allowed God to do with you, what you have allowed God to do with you here at this church. Um, a little bit of that is in West Monroe, Louisiana, and I do, thank the, I do thank the Lord for that. How many has got a prayer request tonight? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. God, what's upon all of our minds tonight, Lord, is in Ukraine, and God, what's going on there. Father, we just ask that you keep your hands upon those people, God. Lord, that you would continue, Lord, to help them. And God, you would continue to be a shield all around them, Lord. Lord, I just ask you, Father, to be upon that country tonight. Lord, I pray for the needs of this local church. God, those that have had surgery this week that attend this church. God, Sister Angie McIntosh, Lord, keep your hands upon her as she recovers. And Brother Tyler Copeland, Lord, keep your hands upon him, oh God, as he recovers. Lord, I pray this evening that you would keep your hands upon all of the names that have been written and have been turned in by way of, of email, Lord. And God, all the names that are scrolling across the screen tonight. And Lord, we know that you're a prayer answering God. And by faith, Lord, we pray tonight. Lord, by faith we pray for strength and by faith we pray for wisdom and by faith we pray that you would give us wisdom to raise our children. And by faith we claim our children that are in this house tonight. Oh, by faith we plead the blood over our children tonight. Oh, we plead, God, those that need to turn around, that they would be a turnaround in their lives, oh God. Lord, we pray for wisdom, Lord, as we lead our families tonight. Lord, we ask you this evening as we bring an offering, God, cheerfully, God, that you would continue to bless First Apostolic Church. You would continue to bless us with good jobs. You would continue to bless us, God, with new industry that's coming into our county. Lord, so the people can get the best of the best jobs in this county so that they can come and give of tithe and offerings, Lord. Support your work around the world. Lord, I give you praise and honor tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody say amen. amen. Before you march out the right side of your pew, would you give the Lord a hand of praise before you do that? That if ivory would come and devour me, but oh, oh, I speak his name, I speak 
the name Oh, I speak his name It's such a wonderful name Jesus There's something about the name of Jesus There's healing in the name of Jesus There's peace in the name of Jesus There's something about the name of Jesus There's healing in the name of Jesus There's peace in the name of Jesus He made the lame to walk He made the dumb to talk Calls the blind to see tonight come on it ought to be the loudest right now we've been singing about the name of Jesus we've been singing about the name of Jesus it ought to be the loudest it's ever been in here tonight we're singing about the name of Jesus oh if you can't get excited about the name of Jesus Jesus Jesus, 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 Jesus. 
Jesus. Woo! There's something about the name. Why don't you turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 4, verse number 8. I've started a journey on Wednesday nights of taking us back through the doctrines that were built upon. Received a, was talking to a fellow pastor the other day. He said that he had a woman or knew of a woman. He took this church. He took an apostolic church. And he preached on the oneness of the Godhead. And a woman that had been attending that church for 38 years. 38 years. Member of that church. Notified him that she would find her another church to go to. That she did not believe that Jesus was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. How in the world do you attend a church for 38 years? Either somebody ain't preaching or somebody's not listening. It's one of the two things. It's one of the two. Well, I tell you what I want it to be. If there's anybody here tonight and you're here very long at all, I want it to be because you're not listening, not because I'm not preaching. Amen? I do want, before I read my text, we are so honored tonight to have Brother Matt Perdue's mom and dad, Bishop and Sister Perdue. We're so glad to have you. I was honored to have lunch with them today. And we just had a great, we just had a great time of fellowship. Would you give Bishop Perdue and his wife a hand? They've got away for a few days and here they are in the house of God. Acts chapter four and verse number eight. Of course, this is the message Peter preached after the healing of the lame man. Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost said unto them, ye rulers of the people, and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Genesis 1 and 1. Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Tonight, continuing on the journey, I want to teach a Bible study on the name of Jesus. Would you pray with me? Father, Thank you for giving me the privilege of proclaiming your word. Lord, thank you today, God, that these people are hungry for your word. Lord, we know how to walk. We know what to believe. We know direction we should go. We know, Lord, when we're tempted, God, and when the enemy tries his best to knock us off the foundation, we know what we're built upon. We thank you tonight. Lord, help me to minister this Bible study on the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. You may be seated. One may wonder, one may wonder why that I would choose Genesis 1 and 1. You look at Acts chapter 4, 8 through 12, and that makes total sense why I would take the text and neither is there salvation in any other. For there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. 
But pastor, I might be scratching my head a little bit right now. Why did you go to Genesis 1 and 1? Well, I'll tell you why. Somehow we can get in our minds to believing that it was in the book of Acts that the name of Jesus and the name became important. But the truth of the matter is, from Genesis 1 and 1, God has revealed a name. God has revealed a name. In Genesis 1 and 1, we find him in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And for the entire first chapter, this God is creating. He is speaking, he is moving, and he is creating. God, this supreme spirit, reveals himself because I want you to know that the purpose of the name is for God to reveal himself. God, the supreme spirit, the supreme spirit being, reveals himself as a creator. The word is, in the Hebrew, is Elohim. It is a plural term. It is a plural term. But yet it's not talking about a plurality of gods. It is talking about a plurality of his majesty and his power. You see, the Hebrew word for face is a plural word. Why is it plural? Because a man's face can show anger, can show joy, can show sadness. The face of a person can show plurality of emotions. As a matter of fact, when anyone wants to use the Hebrew word Elohim to try to prove plurality of persons in the Godhead, take them to Exodus chapter 7 and verse number 1. Exodus chapter 7 and verse number 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. See, I have made thee a God. Moses, I have made you a God. And it's the same Elohim of in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. But I ask you, how many Moseses went down to Egypt and told Pharaoh to let my people go? Why did he make him a God to Pharaoh? He made him an Elohim. Because Moses, by the hand of God, demonstrated that he could take a rod and cause the Nile River to turn into blood. He could take that same rod and fill the air with lice. He could, he could take that same rod and wreak devastation over the land of Egypt. You see, I choose Genesis tonight because Genesis shows us the origin of the universe. Genesis is a real important book. All the major doctrines has its beginning in Genesis, and thus I chose in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis shows us the origin of the universe, order, complexity, the solar system, the atmosphere, the, the hydrosphere, the origin of life, man, marriage, evil, language, government, culture, nations, religion. It is precisely because people have abandoned the truth of Genesis that our society is in disarray today. Everything that's in disarray in our society today is because we have untied ourselves from the book of Genesis. Genesis is important in the New Testament. There are at least 165 passages in Genesis either directly quoted or clearly referred to in the New Testament. Many of these are quoted more than once so that there are at least 200 quotations or allusions to Genesis in the book or in the New Testament. So I choose in the beginning, God created 
the heavens and the earth. Because here is the beginning. Thus we have the name Genesis. God, Elohim. What's he demonstrate himself? What do we know about him? He's a powerful God. He is a powerful God. He is a mighty God. He is able to speak. He's able to, to create. What do we know about him in, first, in chapter 1 of Genesis? He's e Elohim. He's Elohim. That's what we know about him. And if we would be left there, all we would know about God is that he's powerful. He's able to create. But God slowly begins to reveal through the name what he is like. We come now to Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 4. Genesis 2 and 4 is a recap. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 4, follow closely. Watch as something is added to God. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. So now he has established himself as a creator. He's powerful. He's mighty. He's able to speak. And that which is not comes into being. But now he begins to have something that he is the Lord over. This word Lord is where we get Jehovah or we get the word Yahweh. It is, simply means the existing one or the self-existing one. But as we begin to see what this Lord God is attached to, what this word Lord is attached to, we find that the compassionate part of God comes in. Because he not only wants to reveal himself to man as Elohim, mighty and powerful, but he adds Lord to it. And this begins to denote and to reveal that he's not only a powerful God, he is a compassionate God. The Bible says in giving, recapping creation in Genesis 2 and 7, just follow these verses. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Verse number 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. You see, you begin to see, not God, but a Lord God. Sounds like to me that as beautiful as the earth was, God said, man is my highest creation. So therefore, I want man to be in a special place. So he refers as I am Lord God. And let me stop here and just tell you, he does care about us. He does. He is the Lord. He is the Lord God. Genesis 2 and 9. Out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant. Look at that. He, grew the, he, he caused the trees to come up that were pleasant to the sight. Good for food. He is the Lord God. Verse 15, and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Verse 18, and the Lord God said it is not good. You, do, you, do you see this? It is not good. The Lord God, it wasn't God said it's not good. It was the Lord God that said it was not good. It was the Lord God in Genesis chapter 3. And I've said this many times and I hope you never forget it. Anytime God asks a question, please understand he already knows the answer. Why does he ask then? To give you an opportunity to repent. He just sets the stage up. And he says, I'm going to ask you a question, but the question is to lead you to repentance. Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 8. Man has fallen into sin. And they heard the voice of the... Lord God. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the cool, in the garden, in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Verse 21. 
unto Adam and unto his wife did the Lord God, not just God, but he's a caring God. And he reveals himself as a Lord God. The Lord God. Verse number 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us. So now man leaves the garden and man understands that although we have done wrong, we have violated the law of God, we have forfeited the land, the Garden of, e the garden of Eden. Can I tell you? He's not just God. Cold, powerful. There's a lot of powerful people in this world that are some of the coldest hearted people in this world. As a matter of fact, there's a very powerful man that's loose right now. He's powerful, but he's not compassionate. He's powerful, but he's not compassionate. Can I tell you that God is not only a powerful God, but I've come to preach his name tonight and tell you he is the Lord God. That's why in chapter 4, at the very last verse of chapter 4 of Genesis, Genesis chapter 4, verse number 26, one of Adam and Eve's sons and grandsons. Verse 26 says, And to Seth, to him also there was born a son. He called his name Enos. Then begin men to call upon the name of the Lord. Can you see them out there? Can you see them with the history in their mind of their parents of a time of the Garden of Eden? And now sin has reared its ugly head and men are caught in the vice. But thank God, there was some of Adam and Eve's descendants that said, what do you do when the world is falling apart? They said, let's get back with our creator. But let's don't start calling on God. Let's start calling on the name of the Lord. Let's call on his name. Can you see our, can you see our roots in the book of Genesis? You see, tonight when we are in trouble and we call upon the name of Jesus, can you see our roots of humanity? Thousands of years ago, a band of men gathered somewhere in a clearing. Sin was running rampant. And a band of men looked up heavenward. And they began to call on the name of the Lord. Can you say amen? But now, God is not only going to reveal himself as the Lord God, but he would begin to attach things to the name Lord. In Genesis chapter 22 and verse number 14, when Abraham was faced with the greatest trial of his life to offer up his son as a burnt sacrifice, God sent a ram up the mountain and the ram was there instead of Isaac. The Bible says in verse 14, and Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah, that's Lord, he called the name of the place, wait a minute, he's not just Lord, compassionate. He called the name of the place Jehovah, Lord, Jireh. He's not just Lord, but he is Jehovah, Jireh. And Jireh means, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. In other words, he's not just God, a creator, and he's not just Lord, a compassionate, but he is Jehovah Jireh. He is able to provide. He is able to give man what he needs. And of course, this is in reference to Calvary. In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. That whole test was just Bible typology of God becoming a man and hanging on a cross on a hill called Golgotha. And in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. It shall be seen. And therefore, Abraham called him Jehovah Jireh. Israel got in a battle with the Amalekites and they were sure to be defeated by this, by this group. But Moses sat on a rock. Aaron and Hur lifted up his hands. And as long as Moses' hands was lifted up, Israel won, and Israel finally won the ultimate battle. But after the battle in Exodus 17 and verse number 15, 
The Bible said that Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah, Lord. That's what it means, Yahweh, Jehovah, but not just Jehovah. He is Jehovah Nisi. What does Nisi mean? He is Jehovah my banner. When you go to war, you let the enemy know by the flag that you fly, the government that you represent. And Moses said, do you know what our flag is? Our flag is that altar right there. And we're going to add a name to this Lord. He's just not God and he's just not Lord. And he's just not Lord Jireh, Jehovah Jireh. He is Jehovah Nisi. That's a name that you can take to battle. That's a name that you can go to battle with, Jehovah Nisi. David would later add something to this name. He said in the book of Psalms, the Lord, that's Yahweh, the Lord is my shepherd. Later, God wanted to reveal himself to Israel and the Bible simply says that they called him Lord Rapha or Lord, I am the God that heals you. Later, he revealed himself as Lord Shema. That means the Lord is here. When you don't feel like he's working, when you don't see him working, can I tell you there's something about the name that the name brings my provision and the name brings my help from the Lord. And the name, when I can't see him working, there's something about the name that I can just say, I don't understand it, but the Lord, he is here. He is Jehovah Lord Shalom. He is my peace. He is Jehovah Shabbat. He is the Lord of hosts. You see, I didn't want to just start in the book of Acts with his name. I didn't even want to start in the Gospels with his name because his name runs throughout the Bible. It's a thread that runs throughout the Bible. Proverbs chapter 18, verse number 10. Tell me they did not see the name as something important. Look at Proverbs 18 and verse number 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run into it and are saved. You see, I want to take us back to our roots tonight. Because you cannot have a better weapon than the name of Jesus. You, you cannot, don't, don't look, there, there is no better weapon than the name of Jesus. To do, to do battle against our enemy. There's no greater weapon to pull than to know the value of the name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are saved. In that day, they put all the armory, all the spears, the swords, the daggers, the bow and arrows, they kept them in one location in the city. They kept them in the city tower. Not only did they keep them locked up in the tower, but the tower, if the enemy, if the enemy drove them inside the city, they would run into that tower and they would fight from the advantage point of the higher ground. You do know in warfare, whoever has the higher ground has the advantage. That's why one translation of Proverbs 18 and 10 says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are set up on high. Oh, the name of the Lord all through the Bible. That's why I didn't want to start in the book of Acts. I want you to see that our brothers and sisters of the Old Testament Use the name as a weapon. Go with me to the battlefield where a little scrawny shepherd boy accepts the cry and the challenge of a blaspheming Philistine by the name of Goliath. And a little scrawny stripling of a shepherd boy convinces them that he can fight because he says, the Lord delivered me from the paw of the bear and from the hand of the lion. And so join with me now on the battlefield in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse number 45. Join with me there. See the, the big blaspheming giant and see the little shepherd boy. The little shepherd boy, David said, 
In verse number 45, follow it closely. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. David said, I, I see what you're fighting with. He said, I see your weapons. He had weapons. He said, I, I see what you're fighting with, a sword, a, a spear, and a shield. But can I tell you, Mr. Goliath, what my weapons are? You come to me with a spear and a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. I will smite thee, take thy head from thee. Sound like faith to me. I will smite thee, not I might smite thee. I will smite thee and take thy head from thee. And I will give the carcasses, thy carcass of the host of the Philistines this day into the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth and that all the earth may know that there is a God, a power that's in Israel. David used the name of the Lord to do battle against Goliath. In the book of Judges, chapter 13, verse number 17, the Lord came to Manoah and his wife. The Lord came in the appearance of an angel called the angel of the Lord. Now, sometimes the angel of the Lord is mentioned as truly a created angel of the Lord. And other times, and in this instance, it is the angel the appearance of the Lord. The Lord, the Lord who is spirit, can choose to appear as a voice from a burning bush. He can choose to appear as a strong wind blowing and a fire. Or he can choose to appear as an angelic being. And this he did. So in Judges chapter 13, verse number 17, Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name? that when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor. And he asked, he asked the angel of the Lord, he says, what's your name? What's your name? Listen to the response. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? That's, what's, that, that's why we ought to value that's why when a, when a person gets up and starts talking about the name of Jesus, you need to be louder than he's talking about the God that can bless you. You need to be, you need to be, you, you need to be the loudest you've ever been. When somebody, when somebody gets up and starts saying the name of Jesus, everybody ought to just stop. How, how privileged we are. Manoah, you ask about that name, but I'm going to tell you that name. Because it's secret. Well, he wasn't the only one. Jacob got into a wrestling match with that same angel of the Lord. And in Genesis 32 and verse number 29, Jacob gets in this wrestling match with this angel. It was an angel of the Lord. It was the Lord in the appearance of an angel. And Jacob asked him, verse 29, and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said... Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? In other words, he just turns it right back to Jacob and he says, why do you want to know my name? And it seems to me that Jacob had no answer to why he wanted to know that name. Oh, I always want to know that name. That name. That name. God gave us throughout the Bible prophecy. And inside of the prophecy of the Old Testament, from when God told Eve that the seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent, was the first Old Testament prophecy of the coming of God in flesh upon this earth to be our salvation. Throughout the Old Testament, God would give prophecies. Isaiah 9 and 6 is one of these prophecies. Listen to this prophecy about Jesus Christ in Isaiah 9 and 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, 
the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now, understand, his name isn't wonderful, but his name is wonderful. His name isn't Prince of Peace, but his name is the ruler. Prince means ruler. His name is the ruler. If you will let his name have impact in your life, his name will become the ruler of the peace of your life. He is the everlasting Father. He is the Counselor. And then in Matthew chapter 1, verse number 23, the time of the fulfillment would come. And one of the first things that was said to Mary and to Joseph, Matthew 1, Matthew chapter 1, verse number 21, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Watch this now. For he shall save his people from their sins. Jehovah Jireh means the Lord will provide. Jehovah Nisa means the Lord is our banner. Jehovah, uh, Jehovah Rapha means he's our healer. But what does the name of Jesus represent? It represents the greatest illness that man has, ha has ever had and will ever have. It's a sin issue. But I'm glad that God gave us 2,000 years ago, he gave us in humanity the remedy of all sin. Call his name Jesus. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. Verse 23, behold, a virgin shall be with child, shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. His name isn't Emmanuel, but the name of Jesus is God with us. He is the Elohim of Genesis 1 and 1. Now, flesh in Bethlehem's manger. Matthew 1, 25. And knew her not, Joseph knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name. Jesus. Manoah, you, it's not time. It, my name is a secret, but I'm glad that the fullness of time came and God said to the angels of heaven, it's time to let the secret out. Yes, that's how privileged we ought to feel that we get to live in the generation that the secret is out. Manoah couldn't know that name, but we sit here tonight knowing the name that was a secret, the name of Jesus. Well, let's turn to Philippians, the book of Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 5. The book of Philippians chapter 2, verse number 5. And again, I know I'm sounding like I'm repetitive here, but I didn't want to start in the book of Acts with the name. I wanted to go all the way to the Old Testament so that you can see how valuable it is this evening that we know that name. Look with me in Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Let me show you what that is. That's talking about Jesus Christ being fully man and fully God. Son of man, son of God. Master and servant, priest and sacrifice. It's showing the dual nature of Jesus Christ. And Paul is appealing to the church at Philippi, let this mind be in you. Let this mind of humility be in you. Who thought it not robbery to be equal. That word robbery means to take something that doesn't belong to you. Do you know the flesh of Jesus Christ did not take any of the deity away? And the deity did not take any of the flesh away. Who being the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But made himself of no reputation. This is the mind. And took upon him the form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself. And became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. 
Wherefore God hath highly exalted him. How would God highly exalt the man? How would God highly exalt him? Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. God is a good name. Lord God is a good name. Lord Jehovah is a good name. Jehovah Jireh is a good name. Jehovah Shalom is a good name. Jehovah Nisi is a good name. All of those in the New Testament is a good name. But when it comes to Jesus, it is the name that is above every name. It is a name, it is God's crown jewel. When God said, I want to reveal myself, but I don't just want man to know I'm a powerful God. I don't want man to know I'm a, 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 a supreme God. And I don't want man just to know I'm compassionate and just to know I can be the Jehovah Jireh and the Jehovah Shalom and the Jehovah Healer and the Jehovah Peace. He said, I have waited to the last to give a name that is above. That's why we make a big deal about the name. That's why we make a big deal about the name. You know, it amazes me when people want to criticize us, they'll say, that's them Jesus' name, people. Now, I know they're saying it in a critical way, but you couldn't put a higher compliment up on the church. Absolutely, I'm Jesus' name. Or they'll say, they'll say, He's a Jesus only preacher. And they're saying it in a derogatory. They're Jesus only as if we got a cancer of some kind. They're Jesus only. Well, you know what I say to that often? I say, well, at least that terminology is in the Bible. Trinity's not in the Bible. But the Bible says when the glory cloud lifted, they saw Jesus only. But thank God, I'm glad at least Jesus only is... But they, they, they try to, I'm glad I'm Jesus' name. Yes, amen. I am Jesus' name. I am from the top of my head to the bottoms of my sevens and a halves. I am Jesus' name. Praise God. I am. And you ought to be thankful you're Jesus' name. You ought to be glad that you're Jesus' name. God had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, now I'm going I'm, I'm I'm to just stop right there. At the name of Jesus. Now can I tell you that if father was a name, it's not. But if it was. If son was a name, it's not. But if it was. Holy Ghost is not a name. They're descriptive titles of one God. Just like I'm pastor, husband, father, grandfather, uh, and, and, and whatever other title you want to give me. I have one name. I have one, I have one name. Father's not a name, Son's not a name, Holy Ghost's not a name. But if there was a name, the name of Jesus trumps them all. He said he'd given him a name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Can I tell you at the name of Jesus, look back at verse 10. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven. Can I tell you that when the name of Jesus is mentioned in glory, angels have to stop what they're doing. The Bible says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven. If angels that know not the power of redemption are moved to physical behavior to bow at the mention of that name, how much more should you and I that no salvation not allow the name of Jesus to become a common word that can flow through our ears and we have no movements about it. It ought to be that a hand goes up. Somebody said the name of Jesus. It ought to be that an amen just, just blurted out. Oh. It, it ought to be that you find yourself going down the road just talking about the name of Jesus. Jesus, sweetest name I know. I love to talk about the name of Jesus because as the choir says, something happens when I call that name. Something happens when I call that name. Something happens when I call that name. 
of things in heaven. Jesus is mentioned in the celestial beings in high. Angels have to bow. And of things in the earth, that should be you and I. And things under the earth, that's the demonic powers of the enemy. The demonic powers of the enemy are not afraid of your shout. And they're not even afraid of your other tongue. But I want you to know when you begin to talk the name of Jesus... You can do a little holy two-step in the devil's face. He'll fold his arms and wait for another day to attack you. But when you begin to tell old slew foot in the name of Jesus, take your tools and all your little imps with you, get out of my head, get out of my life, get out of my family, get your hands off my family. Something happens. Well, can I talk a little longer tonight? Jesus said in John chapter 5 and verse 43, John 5, 43, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. Jesus said, I came, I have come in my Father's name. Hebrews chapter 1, verse number 4, look at this. Hebrews 1, verse number 4. Speaking of Jesus Christ, being made so much better than the angels. Well, what makes him better than the angels? Here it is. As he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Can I tell you, when God was giving the angels their names, he was just giving them names. But when it came time for God to overshadow a virgin girl, God said, I, I, I've been keeping this name because this is my name. Throughout the ages, I've let you know that I'm God and Lord God and Jehovah Jireh and Jehovah Shema, Shema and I've been letting you know that. But deep down, I've had a secret of my highest name and my highest name is Jesus. And so Jesus, the man, got his name from inheritance. He got that name by inheritance. Well, John chapter 14, Jesus knows that the hour is getting late. Jesus knows that Calvary looms ahead. Jesus knows the birth of the church will come. Jesus knows that he will be leaving these disciples without his visible presence. He knows that he's going to go away and that the Holy Ghost is going to fill them. But he knows that they're going to be without the visible image of God. So he begins to talk to them about what will replace the visible image. He says in John 14, he says in John 14 and verse number 13, now he sees Calvary looming. He says to the disciples, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. John 14, 14, the next verse if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. John 15, verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he may give it. You, you see what he's prepping them for? He's prepping them when he's gone. They're still going to need to preach. They're going to need to operate in the power of God. And he says, I'll tell you what you're going to have. You're not going to have my visible presence. You're going to have my name. Yeah. I hope that sinks in. John chapter 16, verse 24. He just brings it out. He says... Hitherto, hitherto. What that simply means is this. Jesus says, disciples, up to this point, up to this time, hitherto, hitherto, ye have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. He says, up to this time, you all have not asked one thing in my name. Why? I've been here with you. You didn't have to use my name because I'm here with you. 
and I am my name and I operated the name, the power that is my name. You didn't have to do anything because I'm here with you. But he says, there's coming a time. I'm not going to be with you. But yet you're going to need me in your midst. When you come upon people that need to be healed, you can't heal them and you can't save them. But he said, use my name. And Lord, don't I hear a scripture in the back of my mind right now. Say this. For where two or three are gathered together in my name. What? There am I in the midst of them. That's why we baptize in his name. That's why we emphasize his name. When we use that name, he shows up. If it's healing, he'll heal. If it's deliverance, he'll deliver. If it's salvation, he'll save. That's why. Oh, my, 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 my. That's why when the man baptizes you and says in the name of Jesus, listen, if he didn't say in the name of Jesus, you'd only get what a man can give you. But when that man says, I now indeed baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus shows up. He takes away our sin. Something about Jesus. 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 I'll take you through the four Gospels real quick. The four Gospels, all of them in emphasizing the name. Matthew 28, 19. Go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to go into that because I just want you to emphasize, he says the name. The name that brings the Creator into play. The name that brings the Redeemer into play. And the name that brings the Holy Ghost regeneration into play. The fullness of my name. My name can create. My name can save. And my name can change your life. Anybody been changed by the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Anybody in this room that would testify right now by praise. My life had been changed when God baptized me with the Holy Ghost. I am not the man I used to be. Because I got baptized with the Spirit. I got the fullness of His name. Mark chapter 16, verse number 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. Luke 24, 46. Jesus said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance, this is Pentecost now, this is Pentecost, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. John 20 and 20. Some some have tried to say, well, John doesn't mention the name. John doesn't mention, I beg, I don't know what Bible you're reading. Well, John doesn't mention the name. Man, you need to to buy you a good Bible. John 20, tell me that, look at John 20 and verse number 30. John 20 and verse number 30. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing, look at here, and that believing you might have life through. Tell me that John doesn't mention his name. We have life through his name. How do I receive the name? How do I receive the name? You have to receive the name through new birth. It's new birth. How I, how I, how how my last name is Carpenter. I am the son of John Virgil Carpenter and Ruby Lois Carpenter. They had their, their third child on June the 10th and 1960. I am, I am John Virgil Carpenter's son. Thus, it's no amazement to you that my last name by birth is 
How you get that name? You got to get it in the new birth. It's the only way you can get that name. You get that name in the new birth. That's what Jesus meant in John 3. In verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. How do I get the name? New birth. New birth. Galatians chapter 3, verse number 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. When did I get the name? I'll tell you when you got the name. When they baptized you in Jesus' name. That's when you got the name. For as many of us as been baptized into Christ have, look at this wording, have put on Christ. You put on that name of Jesus. I could tell you about Romans. Romans chapter 6 and verse number 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into his death, watch this, were baptized, baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Guess what goes into the baptism pool? Dead sinners. People that have repented, they're dead to sin. Dead sinners go in. But living live saints come out because it's part of being born again. Don't you see that tonight? Say, how important is it? Well, let's let Jesus answer that in Matthew chapter 7, verse number 21. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? How did we prophesy? What? We prophesied in thy name and in thy, would you say it with me? And in thy name, name have cast out devils and said again and in thy name. Done many wonderful works. Then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. The Greek word for iniquity is illegally. You did not have the legal right to use my name. I believe it's called forgery. You use someone else's name illegally. My mother was living. My mother gave me the power of attorney. You know what that meant? I could sign her name. And if anybody, if anybody at the bank and we need to do business, I just took the documents of the lawyer down to the bank and showed where I had the legal right to sign her name. Do you know that we get the legal right? I don't know how some of you are sitting tonight. I'm glad I get to preach on my feet. Do you know when we got the legal right to use his name? When we accepted his name in baptism, heaven recorded, Kenneth Carpenter has got the right to use my name to do great works, to use my name to cast out devils, to use my name. He... Oh, help me tonight. Come on, help me tonight. Help me. Help me lift him, lift him, lift him up high. You didn't have the authority to use my name. You, you used my name illegally. You better be careful. You go to using that name in warfare, you better know that you've got the legal power of attorney to operate that name. Let me tell you why. Acts chapter 19 and verse number 13. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, we adjure you by, the, by Jesus whom Paul preaches. Let me tell you something. The hour's too late for you to be banking on somebody else's relationship. 
They said, hey, boys, let's, let's go down here and let's cast some devils out. Paul seems to be doing a good job at it. Yeah, it is. That's causing the, that's cause Paul got baptized in that name. Paul could cast them devils out because he had the legal power of attorney to do it. These vagabond Jews, these exorcists, they, they said, hey, let's, 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 let's tell evil spirits to come out. We adjure, that's a judicial, that, that verse 13, we adjure, that's a judicial term. We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. These, these seven sons came in verse 15, and, and they said, we, we, devil, we adjure you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches to come out. And the Bible says in verse 15, and the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overcame them, it's a little funny, and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. You better have, you better have the legal, not only do you have the legal right, but you better make sure your dues are current. I'm glad that I got baptized 40 something years ago, but I've still stayed current with the master. I pray to him, I worship him, I attach myself to him, I keep my dues up because I don't know when I'm gonna need to use that name. Well, the old clocks, he done beat me once again. The name of Jesus. No wonder Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. No wonder every baptismal service that was ever conducted in the book of Acts in the New Testament era was done in the name of Jesus. Let me just end with this. You'd stand with me and turn to Colossians chapter 3, verse number 17. Brother Erickson, you think just quickly you could have a little course about the name of Jesus. Is anybody, let me just ask you. I know it's Wednesday night. We normally dismiss before nine, and I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to scare anybody, but why would that scare you if I thought, let's just stay here for a minute or two and worship the holy name of Jesus? Oh, we, oh, we got a baptism. Well, thank God. Come on, we got... Folks, let's, let's don't get accustomed to this. How privileged we are as a church. There's hardly a service goes by that we're not baptizing. There's some churches that go months without seeing anybody get baptized. But let's not let this become a common thing to us. Oh, just a, another person getting baptized. It's another birth in the kingdom. It's the name of Jesus. It's the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to read a verse, in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and, to the, Fa and the Father by Him. Church, I love that name of Jesus. Could we, as Brother Erickson just leads us in a course, could we just worship that name right now? Jesus, I love you. Let's worship Him. Oh, let's lavish praise on Him. Thank you for Your name. Thank You, Lord, for Your name. Thank You, Lord, for Your name. Thank You, Lord, for Your name. Thank You for Your name. Thank You, Lord, for your name. Thank you, Lord, for your name. 
thank you, Lord, for your name. Lord, I wasn't deserving of your name. I wasn't deserving of a new name. Thank you for your name, Lord. Thank you for your name, Lord. Thank you for your name, Lord. Oh, yes. That's it. There's something. Oh, yes. Come on. Don't ask Him for anything right now. Just lavish that name. Just lavish that name. Don't ask Him for nothing. He's already given us. Oh, yes. He's a master. He's Like the forever's after Don't ask him for nothing right now, would you please? Don't ask him for healing. Don't ask him for unless you, unless you're lost and need salvation. Don't ask him for nothing. I think we owe him because how privileged we are. I think we just need to lavish praise upon that name. Oh, to lavish praise upon that name. Come on, before we baptize, let's just lavish praise. Jacob couldn't know the name. Manoah couldn't know the name. Oh, but we know that name. May I never take it for granted. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus, God. Jesus, God. Jesus God Father thank you for this precious soul that has come to be baptized tonight thank you for the effort of men and women in this church that evangelize our city bringing hope to those that have no hope thank you Lord for the men and women that evangelize our county men and women that are have given up on religion because religion let them down but I thank you for the men and women that evangelize and inspire hope in men and women that they can be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of their sin. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Lord, do that again tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You go hold your nose like this. I'm going to baptize you, okay? Jalen Green, because you have repented of all of your sins in obedience to God's holy word, I now baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of all of your sins. Yes. You shall receive the gift. Yes, the Holy you Ghost shall receive the, the gift. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 Fill him with the Holy Ghost. Jesus. Jesus. Akariba Bahaya. Go ahead, Jesus, Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus, 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 do it right now. Jesus, do it right now. Jesus, do it right now. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, do it right now. Do it right now, Lord. Rita Riaba Mamoshete, yay. Shota Raba Mamanda, yay. Oh, yes, yeah. Oh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yes. Jesus, little Oh, yes. And oh, yeah. Now, what I want you to do, Brother Eric's going to sing it one more time. I don't want 
to ever get to Jesus like he's some kind of machine that we only mention his name when I need healing or I, we got family. Listen, there's no greater counselor between a husband and wife that can't get along than for them to join their hands together and start saying, Jesus. Did, it, did they not say that his name would be counselor? Now, I had you just lavish praise on his name. They're going to sing it one more time through. Whatever you need from God, I want you to ask him right now. It's going to come. If it's his will, it's going to come tonight because you're singing about that name. Lord, to the people that need healing. God, if it's your will, Lord. God, just touch with healing tonight. God, deliverance, Lord Jesus. We use your name to cast out strongholds of the enemy, the adversary. Jesus, we use your name tonight over troubled lives, troubled families. Jesus, we use your name as a strong wind to move depression out of our lives, condemnation. Oh, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Go ahead, church. Brother Erickson, sing it one more time before we go home. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Amen and amen. You are dismissed in Jesus' name. We'll see you back here Sunday morning. Be here a little early for prayer. Service begins at 10 o'clock. God bless you. Have a great rest of your week.